talk to you about another theory of culture shock. Your book talked about culture shock and the fact that it is experiences of being in another culture and the highs and lows that you may experience within that culture. Well, I'm gonna to talk to you about the W curve. The W curve is another way of looking at culture shock that also has highs and lows. But the difference is that this theory talks about culture shock not just within the culture that you experience, but also what happens when you re-enter your own culture. So I'm gonna take this W, put a little dotted line down the middle, and that's where you can think about it as where you re-entered your own culture. So over here is the highs and lows of experiencing another culture, and on this side are the highs and lows of re-experiencing your own culture. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the W curve and how it applied to one of my experiences when I first traveled overseas to France. When I first got to France, I was really excited. Everything looked really cool and I could have sworn the grass was even greener just because I was in a different place, someplace new. I was in Europe, it was so exciting. So most things that I looked at were seen very high, very positively, because it was just a new experience and I personally was so excited to be someplace new. But the longer I was there, the more I started to discover that maybe it wasn't all rosy and that maybe it wasn't always gonna be as easy as I thought to experience this culture. One of the lows for me was communicating. I had two years of French in high school but that's not gonna make me bilingual in any sense of the term. So there was a lot of times when I had communication problems, and this was a low point for me. It was hard for me to get my ideas across to somebody else when we were in a large gathering and somebody wasn't able to translate to me. I felt like I wasn't able to truly participate in what was going on. Um, maybe I was a little paranoid that uh, I, might be being talked about or that there was something else that I should know or that was going to be happening to me that I didn't understand. So that was kind of a hard part for me to be there. That was a low. A couple of other examples. Uh, I was used to even like the toilet paper that we have here in the United States. Not necessarily the same when I traveled overseas. In fact, my friends actually dubbed it sandpaper. It's not even the same type of consistency. Well, that's not real fun after all. So to me, that was a low point. Um, I have lots of food stories, which I'm gonna share with you later, but that was also some of them kind of a, 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 not exactly a, an exciting point of my life uh, in my experiences in that culture. But the closer I got to going home, this middle, the dotted line, the more I was able to kind of start to adjust. I was able to learn how to use more nonverbal gestures to communicate with the people around me, or I was able to pick up more language skills from just being immersed in the culture. And I started to see the culture in a positive light again. And I started thinking about how much I was gonna miss it when I had to go home. So when I left, I had a very positive experience again about being in France. So again, the highs and lows of experiencing a culture. But what also happened was I also had highs and lows when I re-entered my own culture. For example, when I first got home, I was really excited to be home. And the first thing I did with my friends when we got to the airport is we went to McDonald's. I know that sounds really bad, but we were so excited just to have food that we knew, something that was familiar, something that was comforting. And so we were very excited to be home to see our family. And that was a high point, being back in our culture and seeing things as, oh yes, it's familiar, it's home. So that was high. But after a while, I started comparing my experiences within the United States with what I knew about France and what I experienced there. And one of the low points of re-experiencing my own culture was seeing how fast my family and friends rushed through meals. When we were in France, everything was an event and we would sit down and we would share and we would talk and meals would sometimes last two, three hours and there would be several courses to the meal, but it was a, a community event where we really felt connected to each other. And here in the United States, sometimes we prepare a meal and we'd be done eating in 10 minutes and then we were all off doing our own things again. So I started to see how fast we really rushed through things here. That was just one example. Um, some other things that I experienced when I was over in France, 
uh, was water usage. Um, some of you may think this is going to be kind of a gross story to share, but I'll tell you anyway. When we went, there were three of us that were staying with a host family, and to help them conserve water, we basically were told um, and came to an agreement that we should just shower once every three days so that there was somebody taking a shower each day, but we had to kind of take our turn so we didn't shower every day, which is something that we all had been used to in the United States. Well, after being there for about a month, I kind of got used to it and I kind of understood why it was important to conserve water like that because we do sometimes get very wasteful. And so when I was back in my own culture, I could see that again. I could say, wow, people who brush their teeth and just let the water run as they're brushing their teeth, that is wasteful. And it took me kind of experiencing another culture, another way of looking at things in order to see sometimes how wasteful I was in my own life. So that was a low point about re-experiencing my own culture. But of course what happened shortly after I got home was I was able to kind of come back to grips about what my life was like in the United States and how I could incorporate pieces of my experiences in France with how I was living in the United States. I personally could try to make sure that meal times were something more special and that we took a little bit more time with each meal. And so that's an example of how I started to climb back up and how I started to readjust my own culture and to again, of course, see it in a positive light. So this particular theory, again, is called the W curve because of how it's shaped. And it's about the highs and lows of it not only experiencing another culture, but also about how you re-enter and re-experience your own culture.